यू थैंक यू सो मच ऑनरेबल श्रीमती किरण चौधरी जी थैंक यू सर सर आई राइज इन सपोर्ट ऑफ द शांति विधेयक 2025 और मैं बोलना बताना चाहती हूँ कि ये केवल एक कानूनी सुधार नहीं है ये बल्कि भारत की ऊर्जा सुरक्षा और आत्मनिर्भरता की प्रति जो है एक बहुत बड़ा कदम है इट इज़ अ हिस्टोरिक एंड लैंडमार्क जज लैंडमार्क बिल सर विच हैज बिन ब्रॉट इन और अभी अभी हम अपने माननीय सदस्य को सुन रहे थे बहुत लंबा चौड़ा उन्होंने भाषण दिया और उसमें कहा पूरा पाठ पढ़ाया पिछले पचास सालों में क्या हुआ है तो मैं यही बताना चाहती हूँ उनको कि जो फ्रेगमेंटेशन जो पॉलिसी पैरालिसिस जो है जिसके जिससे हम जूझते आ रहे थे आज उसी को सुदृढ़ करने के लिए ये बिल जो है ये लेकर आया जा रहा है ऑल द This bill is to end the fragmentation and create one modern nuclear law. This is why this bill has been brought in, and that is why I term it as a very historical and a landmark judgment, a landmark bill. Sir, is bill, this bill repeals old, scattered regulations, replaces them with a single, uniform, uh, unified, and modern framework covering licensing. safety approvals liability and compensation and sir i would like to add that yes the genesis of this nuclear program has been very long there's no doubt about it but because of the policy paralysis we could not move forward shri atal bihar bihari bihar vajpayee ji a former prime minister laid the solid foundation with a clear focus on national security and public safety sir and now under the leadership of our prime minister honorable prime minister modi ji this vision has been has been concretized and it is being taken forward to sir this bill permits limited private and joint venture participation in nuclear power generation subject to strict licensing safety and security approvals i would like to tell the honorable member that when they cry bull for a privatization privatization we know how to protect the nation and we know how to protect the interest of our country so sir in this bill very stringent strict licensing safety and security approvals by the central government have been made have been incorporated in the bill critical areas such as fuel re reprocessing enrichment and spent fuel management remain exclusively within the domain of the government of india so this is not going into the private hands so i want to assure my colleague of this so and this is a very balanced approach because we have seen during the past years that in the electricity regulated private participation made india the third largest power producer so it's an it's an example that is before us and in telecom too liberalization transformed a state monopoly into one of the world's most affordable networks so sir all this when my colleague cries wolf over privatization i would like to tell him that there are ample safeguards and he needn't be worried because under the honorable prime minister's stewardship there's no question of any uh, um, uh, any kind of a uh, thing with the uh, security of our country so at the same time <coughs> we all know that nuclear energy is the core pillar of sustainability and it is projected to be double by 2040 and by it is being driven by manufacturing urbanization ai and data services so coal still accounts for 70% of electric of electricity generation making decarbonization impossible without a firm farm ye uh, non fossil base uh, load so sir this shanti bill strengthens india's nuclear framework enabling large scale deployment of nuclear power and small modular reactors as the honorable minister had said and i would like to congratulate and compliment him 
in bringing, such, uh, bringing forth such a comprehensive bill. Sir, it stabilizes grid stability, energy security, achievement of COP30 targets towards global warming. We are committed to this, sir, the world over. And as we know the emissions that we are, that's happening in our country, we have to keep them and rein them in. So this is a very important aspect. And also, sir, progress towards Vixit Bharat, which is the aim and which is the aim of our Honorable Prime Minister. Sir, sustaining 24 into 7 electricity for every Indian is the goal that our government is looking forward to. Over the last decade, rural electricity availability has risen from 12 to 14 hours to 20 to 22 hours. And in urban areas, almost 20 to 24 hours. So this is a very big achievement, sir. And, sir, from, I would also like to say that defense is a very major sector. We have seen this time how, it is, how important it is to be self-reliant in our defense sector, sir. And till now, no action had been taken. Now, for the first time during the BJP government under the leadership of Honorable Prime Minister, it is now, we are, we are bringing forth the defense reforms and it's a proven fact, sir, that private participation when it was allowed in the defense sector, yet today the, man, the majority of its defense equipment domestically and exports, you know, exports defense products are being exported uh, globally, sir. So this kind of, these kind of doubts when, when it is raised from the opposition side, and especially with, when it concerns the security of our country, as an army officer's daughter, as a, as, a, as a daughter of a brigadier who has bled for this country, my heart also bleeds when they talk like this. <laughs> Sir, from political hesitation to strategic confidence, this is the mantra of the, uh, of the Modi government. Sir, after the Pokhran nuclear test, some leaders in the, co the Congress question the nuclear assertion. And it's a matter of record, whatever they might try and show us. This is also a matter of record. And it reflected a deeper hesitation to embrace strategic strength. So, sir, now for the first time, with confidence, we are moving forward. And I don't understand why they have a problem with this. So it reflects the Modi government's unambiguous belief that nuclear power is a pillar of national strength and development. And, sir, I have no hesitation in saying that during the UPA's time, there was complete apathy. A whole series of uh, this thing can, uh, can show us that there was total apathy. And now, in the NDA, NDA's time, energy revolution is taking place. We are moving forward into the 21st century. We are not sitting on our backs and not doing anything about it. So, sir, in 2009, UPA prom I would like to tell them, 2009, the UPA promised 63 GW of nuclear capacity by 2032, but delivered less than 7 GW. Prime Minister Modi inherited a broken nuclear pipeline, but he reversed this with his strength and his conviction. He added 21 reactors, increasing generation from 34 to 56 million units. This is all a part of record, sir. And escape, along with it, sir, that is the reason why the world looks towards us today. They are, it's not charity that they are coming and working with us because they have confidence now in India that we are capable, that we are self-reliant. There is no doubt about it. And that's why Kundakalam is being, it's there with Russian technology, Jaipur, is said to become the world's largest nuclear plant with French reactors and the American and Japanese cooperation which they were talking about, which was once stalled, has now taken over again. So, sir, I would also like to rebut some of the issues which my honorable co colleague raised, that this privatization endangers national security. <coughs> sir, I've already talked about the examples of electricity and telecom. When the private sector comes in, how much of a boost that we get. Sir, fuel enrichment, reprocessing, spent fuel management remain exclusively under government control. Nobody can take that away from us. Private participation is only and only limited to and regulated and fully supervised by the central government 
and the AERB. I would put this on, like to put this on record. Another rebuttal is, sir, that foreign players will compromise sovereignty. I don't understand that, sir. Sovereignty is protected by law and control and not by fear, sir. We are strong. We are atma nirbhar hain. We know how to control and we know how to work this thing forward. We know how to control and we know how to work this thing forward. And this because, sir, and we also know, sir, that nuclear energy is the backbone of clean growth. It's very, very important for the future. We can't look back on 50 years what happened. We have to look towards the 50 years in future if we want our country to, to take its stand in the world nations, sir. Along with that, Nuclear power is carbon-free, reliable, and essential to meet our climate commit commitments and industrial growth, as we all know. And then another issue which they raised was, nuclear power is unsafe. Sir, this fear belongs to the past. We all know that India has the strongest nuclear safety records globally. The world acknowledges us. Shanti Bill, this bill strengthens safety norms aligns them with international standards, and promotes small modular reactors, like the Honorable Minister told us, which are safer, quicker to build, and globally acceptable. Sir, my Honorable colleague also said that the bill weakens liability and protects cooperation. I would like to rebut him saying that this allegation is completely misleading. Under the UPA rule, liability confusion stall projects for a decade, sir. What a shame. Something which all to have been done a decade earlier and where our country would have been today was completely stalled. This bill, sir, provides legal certainty, victim compensation, and accountability, which is the most important thing. And it ensures that projects move forward without compromising public safety. Sir, honorable, sir, I would like to say that this bill, 2025, despite all my opposition colleagues crying wolf over every issue, I would like to say that this bill is a trajectory which will take our country to, a, to the path of development in the future. And also, it stands for clarity over confusion, which was the norm of the day at that point in time. Confidence over hesitation, because they were always hesitating, karna hai, nahi karna hai, kya karna hai, nahi karna hai. All the time, this was the issue that was going on. Victim come, uh, answer, progress over paralysis. This is the mantra of the BJP government under the honorable stewardship of our prime minister. And sir, I would like to say that this is, like I said, it's a historic legislation. And I would request all the honorable members in the interest of the country, they should all support the bill. Thank you very much. Thank you.